Hey everybody, Model Man here with the Biennial Workbench Teardown. I haven't really done anything yet, but this whole area is getting pulled out, cleaned out, and put back in. And in this case, going for an upgrade and a move around. The uh, stand here and the table, those are going to swing in to where the fan is and the paint booth. Or rather, I should say the current paint booth, which is about to be the old paint booth. The old paint booth will become a new dusting, sanding, uh, particulate generating area confinement zone, uh, complete with a built-in vacuum cleaner in the bottom, pegboard and all that kind of thing to help keep those kind of messes contained. That is going to go either over here in the corner or over here at this side. And this big dolly here is going to be sliding in the other of the two spaces, whichever ones. All of this stuff here, some of that is going to go into the storage space that the dolly is going to be the base of. Others of it is going to get pulled and go somewhere else. The electrical bench should be scooting in nice and tight and this can move in there a little. And uh, the moment this case cabinet is either going to go kitty corner and kind of segregate the green screen wall area or more likely it's going to get knocked onto its side and along the long along the wall there so that I can still use it for storage and as a uh, something to put stuff on so I got a little bit of to do in to do and it looks like I also lose the space for that so I got to find some new spaces and figure stuff out and move things around and uh, there's a lot to do, so let me dig into some of it here. It's nice to have a view and some light coming through the windows. However, in this configuration, I lose half the paint booth. And, uh, yeah, it's not all that great. And over here in the middle of the floor, that kind of kicks into the way. So, let's uh, swap these two around and see what happens. Or there's this option here that creates a pocket space right there for any kind of storage. The tripod currently hangs from that. However, this is still a little narrow for the chair. I would be backing into this a lot. However, this is a maximum size. At 30 inches wide, it's definitely the maximum possible width and it's probably close to what the booth is actually going to be. However, at 48 inches long, I'm expecting that probably to come down half a foot. <coughs> the main entrance here is still going to be fine. And there'll be plenty of room to walk around here, so I can leave this where it is. And, uh, this booth can go where it is, but this may have to move. I am going to lose a lot of the wall here. The other thing I'm looking at is this tried, true, and trusted cabinet shelf setup has been really good over the years, but if I lay this on the ground going that way, I can use it for the lamp stand. The Dremel drill stand is going to go in here with the sanding and all that kind of thing, which really makes this more of a generic storage unit than anything else, and that can go anywhere. Therefore, uh, there might be something significant in store immediately. I sacrificed the paint booth and basically looking at this thing here it was generic storage on the bottom with a little specialty storage on top and with this new layout I can replicate that or do better. So I'm going to convert this into the new sanding, drilling, resin, particle creating uh, apparatus. Essentially what will be going on is uh, a vacuum cleaner would go in the bottom which would be hooked up to the top. I will fence off this area and this will be the main vacuum chamber overall. There will be a pedestal mounted into it to which I could attach either the uh, skill saw there or the Dremel stand, have it interchangeable. Uh, then have a false floor somewhere say like here so cut a hole in this right there and then this top here I would again wall this off, remove the top and then this would be the open pit essentially. And being on wheels it'll be uh, nice and handy. I can move it out to the middle of the room if I need to and so on and so forth. And looking over here 
another day and a few dollars lighter and I have got the pegboard and that's really all I thought I was going to get. I thought I might also get this piece here which I did. However, I also got the rest of the pegboard and what the heck, I went and bought all the wood that I need. At least for the paint booth as far as I know, I'm going to see what I need still to do. I've got a couple uh, full length pieces of wood out there all ready to be cut into whatever I need to. So that is a later stage. So what I'm going to do now is start constructing all the walls around this. I wanted to have this as a base so that I knew exactly how big things were going to be. So from here on I'm expanding the entire size from there which is why I built this too large. So even though it says the piece of wood is say a 1x4 it's really going to be a 0.75 by 3.25 or whatever so we can't rely on that kind of math so until it's really done it's really done and I'm kinda basically gonna build it like a model so let me see what I can get done in a few minutes and it's probably well past time of a progress report I don't even know if I got a shot of the original layout when I just had uh, the four main frames uh, laying down with the pegboard but right now everything is pretty much solid together I've got to put some bracing along here before I put the sides in but those are going to be screwed to the walls fixed permanently and then the floor will go in last however at the moment I'm using the floor to keep this square because it's just slightly off and it's right on this corner right here I may have to tuck it in a little and uh, we'll see how that goes right now what I'm about to do is get the floor square again and then uh, put the top cross brace that's about as zoomed out as I can get here and I do have to uh, cut these little notches off of here and when I was doing the math I was working with whole numbers of like 1x4, 1x2 of course, in reality, it's really 0.75 by 1 whatever, 3.25, so on and so forth. So I haven't really gone by the math, but so far it's working out pretty well. I may need to put another cross brace uh, inside here somewhere. And to get all those levels, uh, there's the piece of paper. So I gave this piece of paper a bit of a fold. You can kind of still see it along there. Then I used a sharpie to mark it off, and that basically became the straight line going around. Nice easy way to measure. So I can still use that again if I need to add any more braces along the sides, or even in the middle. But that one would be much easier, of course. So far it's just starting to get heavy, and by the time this is done it'll definitely be heavy, because there's got to be backing put on it still. Oh, actually, you know what? Oh yeah, I still have to do this anyway. Never mind. I was thinking I could just leave this here because uh, there has to be some depth going on. I have to cut some more of these to put on the back for the pegboard. However, I don't need to cut those. Uh, do I? We'll see. I don't know. And the next morning... Hey, look at that. very glad to see that I get to cut down the uh, dolly because it is a bit long that'll help me tighten things up a little bottom falls into place pull that up have a look at the filter if I need to my idea at this point is that since this is not going to be attached to the base uh, it's just going to be form fit to make a good seal I should take some rounded molding strip and run that along the back so that way if I lift this up I can tilt it against that and get down to the filter that will be underneath this. But yeah, sweet. It's not quite square everywhere. For example, you can watch this line go up and disappear. But everything else is fairly square, and once I make the base for this, the platform it's going to sit on, I'll ring it with one by ones and force this to be in square from there. So essentially, uh, this line here 
should go square and all that space should go into the back. Still have to do the outer sides, got to put a roof on this, got to install the LED strips along the ceiling. I'm going to throw a power button here I think and then it will be detachable power from the base. Speaking of the base, it turns out I didn't buy any wood for that at all. So the base floor top essentially will have this attached to it just underneath. I'm going to have to use one inch plywood for that it looks like. And I may be able to get away with half inch for the sides and the back and maybe some internal walls. I got to check my plans again. So. I'm pretty psyched about this. This is definitely a really good sized box. It's going to be plenty of room to handle almost any piece that I can name and put them aside. Having huge two foot walls means that I could even hang the Jupiter 2 uh, shell in here and not worry about it. In fact, I could even hang the shell on the back wall here and paint it like that. Let me see something. Heck yeah. Put a peg in there, hang this, and then paint it straight on. Top down, as it were. That is going to be nice. So this model is going to inaugurate and christen the paint booth. So I think I mentioned I needed to sheet the sides. I did mention the LEDs would go in the top, and at that point I should probably get like a quarter inch a uh, piece of wood to make an official top out of that and perhaps I should even brace in the middle here just in case I do want to put weight on this let's face it I'm gonna want to put weight on this so yeah I will have to brace it now that I'm looking at it just as I braced the bottom alright so I am really psyched about this this is really gonna be nice to have so hey, I got another week or so to deal with this stuff and videos will be coming out. So thanks for watching. See ya. And here are a few YouTube channels that might interest you. As always, the Scale Model Addict. Scott Gervan brings you his own work and the Scale Model Addict Forum and Scale Model Addict Magazine. Dr. Faust's The Painting Clinic. Check out Tony for miniatures and model painting. What time is it? It's cranky time. With his lab rat Ori assistant Igor, Dr. Cranky brings you the best in rats, rods, and rust. Steve Neal's Garage with Rosie the Wonder Dog, Mary, and Xena, featuring feature film props, restorations, and scale model artistry. Scott Alexander of Atomic City Models, specializing in 2001 A Space Odyssey model recreations and a few other notable genre pieces as well. Braddock 001, whether a one-to-one -one scale Borg sleep station, droids of any make or model, or even popular superhero armor or any kind of sculpture, look to Brad Carpenter to bring it. And for the trials, tribulations, and tales of my car Red 2 and its droid lemons, check in on Gears McTinkerson. Bad Grendel's for fine model work, timer chips, and electronics knowledge. The Model Man Tom channel would like to thank the following for their sponsorship. Elliot Brown of Kingston Vacuum Works, featuring Fedoratron.com and WarmPlastic.com. Lighting for extraordinary modelers, and vacuum forming tables for designers, modelers, and engineers. Kingston Vacuum Works covers it all. Paul at TheFiberOpticStore.com, now presenting the beta version of its new site, TheFiberOpticProjects.com. For an exceptional selection and great prices of fiber optics of all sizes and quantities, thefiberopticstore.com. Carpenter Creations. If you can dream it, you can make it. Brad and Carpenter, science fiction artiste. From full scale board cubicles or droid displays of all kinds, Carpenter Creations. Steve Neal's Garage. Props and models for motion picture and discerning collectors, as well as prosthetic makeup and CG. Contact Steve through stevenealsgarage.com. Model reviews from Round 2 Models, AMT, MPC, 
Solar Lights in Lindbergh. Scale Model Attic Magazine. Issue 3 now available. Issue number 4 is in the works. The Orbital Defense Engineering Commission, a 2001 A Space Odyssey specific forum for scale model kits, reviews, news, and discussion. Orec.proboards.com More than just talk, hobbytalk.com A forum for every hobby. And for the finest reference collection of feature film studio props and miniatures and models, Modelers Miniatures and Magic at ModelerMagic.com